take a shot every time I say Taylor. Hello everybody, it's your girl Jay and today I'm here with my July wrap up part two out of two for 2023. I read a total of 14 books this month so the first seven are already up on my channel if you want to check those out the link will be down below but these are the next and final seven books that I read for July. I have to bang this video out in like 20 minutes because tonight I'm going to the Barbie movie if you couldn't tell by all the pink. I also have pink shorts on. Very excited. My mom is wearing grey to the Barbie movie so that is blasphemy if you ask me. So I had to go all out on pink. This is what I look like. It's so cute. So without further ado, let us get started. But the first book I'm going to talk about is The Godpillin Emperor. This is by Katherine Addison and I ended up giving this a 3 out of 5 stars. This follows Maya who is 18 years old after the unexpected death of his father, the Emperor, and all of his brothers in an airplane crash. He finds himself in line to be the next Emperor. He has been raised in exile by his cruel cousin after his mother, the fourth wife of the Emperor, was sent away years ago. Completely un prepared for his new role, he turns to the palace people around him to guide him and it's kind of the story of that. I really wanted to love this because it is so highly praised by so many people, but to be honest I was very bored throughout the majority of this book. Also the amount of times serenity is used in this book drove me up the wall. I understand that it is a term of respect for the Emperor, but uh, it was every other sentence was just my serenity, the serenity, blah blah blah, and I'm like mm mm. It just took me out of the story. The cast of characters is also so large that it was very hard to keep track of who was who. I did really love Maya though. He was just such a gentle, caring soul who was definitely dealt some very hard cards in life. I liked how he grew as the story progressed and he really came into his role as Emperor, but I was still very underwhelmed throughout the whole story, so... I can see why people loved it, it just wasn't entirely for me, so I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. The next book I have is Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim. I give this a 4 out of 5 stars. This follows Maya, who is the daughter of a renowned tailor. She has the hopes of becoming a tailor herself, and she is very talented, but because she is a female, she is not able to pursue this career. One day, there's a knock at their door, and a man is there, and he says that he has the task of bringing her father to the royal court to become the emperor's new tailor. Her father has recently fallen ill, so Maya offers herself as the replacement for him, but she is denied because she is a female, so she decides that she is going to disguise herself as her older brother and go in her father's place. When she arrives, she discovers that she is not in fact going to be the new tailor. She has entered into a competition against 12 other tailors to become the new tailor. With the help of the king's enchanter, Eden, she must beat out her competitors without being discovered and it's the story of that. So this is apparently a Mulan retelling which I really enjoyed but I honestly didn't see all the many comparisons other than she disguises herself as a boy and isn't really accepted into society and the role that she wants to play because of her gender. I was so intrigued by the magical scissors that Maya has in her possession during the story. I just wanted to know more about them and how they worked. I really liked Maya as a main character. She was just so fierce and knew what she was capable of and didn't give a shit that she was a woman. I also really liked Eden. He was just so sassy and witty with his comebacks. We love a sass king. I do wish that the competition aspect of the story was more heavily focused on than the romance, but I did enjoy it nonetheless. I liked the romance enough in this story and I liked the journey that the two went on during the competition, but I was definitely more invested in the competition itself rather than those two other parts of the book. I just felt that the first half of the book during the competition was so fast-paced, but then when we got to the journey aspect and the romance became more heavily focused on, it definitely slowed it down the pacing a lot for me. I'm definitely intrigued to see where the story goes, so I do want to pick up the second book in the duology if I can get my hands on it. 
I enjoyed it for what it was, four out of five stars. The next book I have is The Thirteen Doorways, Wolves Behind Them All by Laura Ruby. I gave this a two out of five stars. This follows Pearl, who is a young ghost, and she is following Frankie and her sister Tony, as well as her brother Vito, who live in a Chicago orphanage during the Great Depression and World War II. After their father remarries, the father comes back for Vito but leaves Frankie and Tony behind and it's kind of the story of that. I was initially very intrigued by this book because of the concept of a ghost narrator. I thought that it was going to be really interesting, but this book just was not for me. I was so bored. I didn't care about anything or anyone in this story. I felt that it was incredibly slow. There were so many subplots that I just could not follow because there were so many of them. I just think that the point got lost in the end. The only thing I really did like about this book was the female friendships. I loved seeing them together, but other than that, I didn't really like much. I think that it was just a very convoluted way of trying to say that females struggle so much more than males and, and what they went through. It just... I didn't care. So, yeah. I gave it a 2 out of 5 stars. The next book I have is My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. I finally read this book and I'm so glad I did. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. It basically follows Abby and Gretchen who have been best friends since the 4th grade and now they are inseparable in the year of 1988. They are now in high school and after a night of skinny dipping and experimenting with some acid, Gretchen starts acting very strangely. Abby isn't really sure why and she starts to think that she may be possessed and she decides that she is going to get her best friend back. I finally picked this up because it was turned into a movie last year and I have Amazon Prime now so I really wanted to watch it. The movie was interesting to say the least but I definitely like the book more. This is actually my first Grady Hendrix book if you can believe it and I was definitely not disappointed. I think that it was a very cute fun read with the perfect amount of horror if you want to call it that. It was very gruesome at bits and I think that the humor definitely balanced those more gruesome bits out very well. I definitely wouldn't say that it was scary at any point of the book but it was a fun time. I really loved Abby and Gretchen's friendship. I loved how fiercely they cared about each other and I really love how Abby was not gonna give up on her friend no matter how many people told her that she was crazy for thinking that she was possessed. I love how she was gonna get that bitch back from the devil. I think that my favorite part of the book was Brother Lemon. He was such a great comedic relief for those more spooky parts of the book. Especially during the exorcism scenes, I don't know if he was supposed to be as funny as he was, but I was cracking up laughing at this guy. I ended up only giving it a 4 out of 5 stars instead of a 5 stars because I do feel like it started dragging a little bit in the middle, but it definitely did pick up in the end. I'm also a little bit confused on how Gretchen became possessed because I don't really think that we got an explanation, except for the drugs, unless I missed something while I was reading it. I don't think there was any like actual definitive reason why she was possessed. In the movie there is, but not in the book. I'm definitely going to be checking out more from this author, so if you have any recommendations of which book I should check out next by them, please let me know because I'm definitely intrigued by his writing. Next up, I read Chaos and Flame by Tessa Grattan and Justina Ireland. I gave this one a 4 out of 5 as well. This follows Darling Seabreak, who is the last remaining survivor of the House of Sphinx. She is now the adoptive daughter of the House of Kraken. Her adoptive father ends up being kidnapped by the House of Dragon. And she will stop at nothing to get him back and murder those who took him from her. On the rescue mission, she is captured by Talon Goldheart, who is the war prince, and he wants nothing other than to protect his older brother Caspian, who is the dragon regent. Very confusing, but when you read the book, it's hella good. Although this book is quite slow at times, I was so invested in this story and these characters right from the beginning. The prologue blew me away. It follows Caspian and he is learning about his boon, which is basically a magical ability. He is able to paint prophecies and he always is continuously painting the same girl. I needed to keep reading after that because I was so intrigued intrigued with who this girl was. I just think the whole concept of the boons was so interesting and I really liked how not everybody had the same boon. Everybody's was so unique to them and I loved learning more about them. I also really loved how throughout the entire book we never really knew if 
if Caspian was going mad or if he was playing some sort of role. I just loved how increasingly unhinged he became and I never really knew what was going on with him, which made it so much more interesting when he was in any scene. I just really want to know more about him. I really hope that it's a heavier focus on him in the second book because I need to know more. I'm, I'm very, very intrigued by his character. This is told in alternating point of view between Talon and Darling, which I thought was really interesting because I definitely think that Caspian was the most interesting character, but by having him take more of a backseat, kind of wanted to know even more about him. I did like being able to see inside both of these characters' heads. I will say that I wasn't fully invested in this romance. It's supposed to be an enemies to lovers romance, and I feel like the enemies portion of it was very, very short, especially because Talon's family is supposed to have murdered Darling's entire family, so you would think that, you know, she wouldn't exactly be like, oh wow, he's hot, murderer, but hot. It just didn't really make sense to me. I definitely think that if it had been more of a slow burn romance and they got to actually get to know each other rather than one meeting, it, it would have been a little more believable. I like Darling as a main character. She was a warrior through and through. She wasn't going to take shit from anybody, which I really liked. She was definitely the grump to Talon Sunshine. I freaking love Talon. He is just a little cinnamon roll playing the part of a war prince. I really liked his relationship with Caspian, how fiercely he was going to protect him. He will kick the ass of anyone who tries to harm his loved ones, and I absolutely love that about him. I really liked the banter between all of the characters, but especially Talon and Darling. I just think they were so witty and fun. This ends on such an insane cliffhanger, and the second book doesn't come out until 2024, which I am so mad about because I need it now. Like, you need to read the book just for the cliffhanger so that I can scream about it with somebody. So if you haven't read this book, please do. I give it a four out of five stars. You need to read it too. Next up, I have An Unthinkable Thing by Nicole Lundrigan, and I gave this a 3.5 out of five stars. This follows 11-year-old Tommy Ware who loses everything when the aunt that he lives with is unexpectedly murdered. He is forced to move in with his mother, Esther, who has been working as a maid for the very wealthy Henenberry family. The story starts off with Tommy standing trial for the murder of the Henenberry family in the backyard of their house by the pool with the father's own gun. And it's basically, did he do it or did he not do it? This book is full of unlikable characters except for Aunt Celia, Esther, and Tommy himself. I never fully trusted any of these characters. I actively despised them all. I was definitely curious to see where the story and trial was going to end up. It's told from Tommy's point of view, and it's basically him telling what happened leading up to the events at the pool that day. There are court transcripts, interviews, news articles sprinkled throughout the book that kind of helps the story unfold, which I thought was very interesting. You can't help but root for Tommy throughout the entire story. You want so badly for him to be innocent because he is just such a sweet little caring boy. It is definitely a slow burn story that unfolds chapter by chapter. One chapter you think something is happening, but then it completely flips itself on its head and you don't know what's going on. There's a lot of talk about family and entitlement, privilege, and power imbalances, which I actually think was done pretty well. There is a huge trigger warning for on-page rape, so just be aware of that going into it because it is pretty graphic. I actually finished this in one sitting because I really wanted to know if Tommy was innocent. I had theories and I ended up only being partially correct. I enjoyed it. I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. So. And then the final book that I have to talk about is The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman. I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. It follows Nobody Owens who after the death of his entire family when he was a toddler, he is taken in by the ghosts of a graveyard. The man who killed Bod's family is actually hunting hunting him throughout his life as he becomes a young man. The ghosts all band together to help protect Bod from Jax with the help of a mysterious being named Silas, and it's kind of the story of him growing up. I listened to this on audiobook. The narrator was Neil Gaiman, which I think was really cool to have him tell me the actual story that he wrote. This was a really cute read. It was very fast. I read it in one sitting. This edition is actually the 10th anniversary edition, so it actually has illustrations throughout it, which I really liked. I think that it was a great addition to the story. There's only like six or seven of them, but I was into it. I think that the story started off really strong for me when Jax comes in and kills Bod's family, but 
I think that it lost steam for me as it progressed. I did really like following Bod and his adventures as he is raised by these ghosts. Bod is just such a sweet little guy and I wanted to protect him at all costs from Jax. I thought it was really interesting how unique each of the ghosts were and how based off of the time periods that they died in, they kind of brought lessons and life teachings to Bod. My biggest complaint though was that I wanted to know so much about Silas and I feel like we barely got anything. Like we don't even know what kind of being he is, which is really frustrating because I just wanted to know more of his backstory, but I didn't get it. I didn't get it at all by the end of it. I still have no idea who he is, so that was very frustrating. But overall, fun, fast, quick middle grade book. It, it got me up to 14 books, so I'm into it. All right, everybody, so those were the last seven books that I read for the month of July 2023. If you're interested in the first seven, then that will be linked down below. You can check it out. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye! <laughs>